Beloved people of God, welcome to Christmas. Welcome if you are here every week, some weeks, Christmas time, or just tonight. Welcome if tonight finds you in joy and peace and celebration, and welcome if this night stirs pain and loss. Welcome if you are excited, and welcome if you are not. Tonight we are invited to celebrate Jesus' birth to hear the ancient stories of our people, of our faith, of our dreams. We are invited to allow these stories to seep into our lives, drawing us into the hopes and dreams and celebrations of long ago that live on with us. We are invited to experience the presence of God and to remember that the birth long ago happens again tonight in each one of us and all around us. So come, let us celebrate Christmas. we have gathered in anticipation, worshiping as the family of God, reflecting on the lights that mark our way, the wonder of new promises, the challenges set before us, and the celebration of new life. By the grace of God's covenant, fulfilled in the love of Jesus, we lit the candle of promise. By the grace of God's extravagant love made known in Jesus, we lit the candle of impossibility. By the grace of God's powerful spirit, ever present and always refining, we lit the candle of renewal. By the grace of God's joy made known to us in Jesus, we lit the candle of feasting. Our season of waiting is over, and the Savior of the world is here. As we light the Christ candle, we join our voices with all the saints to praise the holy name of the Lord. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory amongst the nations, his marvelous works amongst all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is re revered above all gods. Blessed Messiah, Son of God, you have come to redeem your people and set us free by your amazing love. As we praise your holy name, may the light of your love guide us. And may we rejoice in letting the light of your love shine in all the world. Amen.
people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt from dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
In their region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of the great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those in whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. captive Israel. Having grown up in the church and surrounded by the church, I've known for a long time that Emmanuel means God with us. It's one of those things that I don't actually remember learning. That's how ingrained it is in our church culture. 
But as a child, I was under the impression that Emmanuel was a name that carried this meaning in a sort of symbolic way. In the same way that I was often told that my name, Sarah, means princess. But no, Emmanuel is actually a compound Hebrew word that can be broken down into three parts. Im is the Hebrew word for with or alongside. Anu is the shortened form of anachnu, which means we or us. El is one of the Hebrew words for God. Im, Anu, El. With us, God. I'll leave the face I made in Hebrew class when I finally work that out to your imaginations. But every year, on December 25th, we celebrate this moment of incarnation, that God is with us. Sometimes, though, I think we get a little too caught up in the adorable baby Jesus, and we miss the implications of that with us God. God has a body. God weeps. God walks and moves. God sees and smells and tastes. God hugs. Somehow, every year, the absolute ridiculousness of the Incarnation smacks me right in the face. God didn't just come to us. God became one of us. God chose to be born, to enter the world as a tiny, fragile infant, completely dependent on Mary for his survival. God chose to grow up, to be parented, to learn, to ask questions. And when it came time for Jesus to reveal who he was and why he had come, he didn't go and find the best and the brightest or the ancient equivalent of a marketing firm to launch his brand. He went and grabbed fishermen straight from their boats and tax collectors from their stands. He found Andrew sitting under a tree eating a piece of fruit and said, follow me. He didn't write a book, he formed a community. He didn't set up shop and wait for someone to come to him. He went from city to village to town, crossing over mountains and hanging out in the sketchy neighborhoods. He sought out the ones who needed something. Healing, hope, community, restoration, forgiveness, and he gave it to them, freely and fully. God did not come to us just to Hulk smash sin and evil and then go home. God came to us. God became one of us so that when we weep in the night, when we cry out in loneliness, when we want to shake our fists at the sky, when we celebrate and sing, when we are so overwhelmed with joy or fear or sorrow that we cannot even find the words, God can look us in the eye and say, me too. God's presence with us does not automatically make everything okay. There is plenty of wrong and hurt in our world, and after this year, we are even more acutely aware of the vastness of it. But, there's always a but. Jesus' life reminds us that the wrong will not last forever. In just a few short months, we will be celebrating a new and different kind of new life. The life that overcomes even death. Friends, what I want you to hear more than anything else this year is this. You are not alone. Whatever you carry, Wherever you've been, whatever mistakes you have made along the way, God has not and will not abandon you to it. God is with us on this night and every night. And that is good news. Thanks be to God. 
Amen.
one of the gifts in Christ's coming among us, to become one of us, is that Jesus shows us over and over again the importance of not just food, but of gathering around a table together. So while we mourn that we can't do this in person, tonight I invite us to grab some bread and some wine or juice and to remember that whenever we gather here at Christ's table, this table of remembrance and communion and hope, we gather with the people of God from every time and place. We gather in God's spirit. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is our joy, Creator God, to give you thanks and praise. For in the beginning you created the heavens and the earth. Out of darkness and chaos you brought light and order. You have given life to every living thing and made us in your image. Even when we turned away from you, loving darkness rather than light, you did not turn away from us. You sent prophets to show us the way. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son to be Emmanuel, God with us. At his birth, the night sky lit up with heavenly host and a guiding star. Shepherds and magi found their way to you. Women and children, tax collectors and lepers continued to find their way to you. The darkness of Gethsemane, the cross and the grave, could not overcome you, for you are the light of the world, shining still. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. In this feast, make us one with you and with each other. Inflame us with your Spirit, that we may be united in ministry in every place. Send us in your marvelous light into the world, ready to serve others and work for peace. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Friends, our Lord Jesus, on the same night that he was betrayed, sat at table with his disciples. There he took bread, he gave thanks for it, he broke it. He gave it to them, saying, take, eat, this is my body, given for you. In the same way, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup, blessed God for it, and poured it out, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember me. Friends, I invite you to partake when you are ready, in whatever way is most suitable to you for what you have. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Christ has fed us at his table. Let us pray. God of glory, by your grace a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and it is in his name that we pray. Wonderful counselor, we pray for wisdom for our world's leaders, that they may use their power to lift burdens and do justice. We pray for the church, 
that you would multiply and increase our joy as we share in the life and love to which you call us. We pray for our families, our friends, and our loved ones, that all those who walk through the Valley of Shadows may see the great light of your saving love. Prince of Peace, we pray for an end to violence and warfare, that your authority and presence may continue to grow until there is endless peace in every place. Word of Hosts, establish your kingdom with justice and righteousness from this time on and forevermore. And until that day, we will pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Whether you are living in the shadow of the darkest night or the brightest of days, whether you are grieving or rejoicing, God is with us. So I invite you to light your own candle. As a reminder that wherever we are, whatever our circumstances, whatever challenges we face, God is indeed with us. Amen.
Christ has been born once again within us and among us. As we celebrate God's gift, go in peace.